and contact with um, Dr. Fakhak. We'll get back to him as soon as uh, we're able to get through. And we'll move on now to Angola. Angola State Oil Company, Sunangol, plans to win the country off fuel imports and has received more than 60 proposals to help build refineries in Africa's second largest crude producer. Angola imports 80% of its fuel products traditionally from Swiss commodity trader Trafigura and more recently from top oil trader Vital. In a statement, Sunangol said it plans to build a 200,000 barrels per day refinery in the coastal city of Lobito by 2022 and another plant in the northern enclave of Cabinda. No time frame or capacity were given on the Cabinda project. The state firm says it had received proposals from international and domestic companies that uh, submissions were open until February 10. Uh, the two refinery uh, projects come on, on top of an agreement signed towards the end of last year with at least ENI to optimize the refinery in Luanda over 20 months and get it running beyond its normal capacity of 65,000 barrels per day. Well, let's quickly cross over to Europe, where my colleague Daniel Koop is at the Deutsche Bank headquarters to tell us more about the results um, coming up from there. Hello, Daniel. Thank you very much for joining us and good to see you. So what's happening there? What is it about their earnings? Yeah, exactly, uh, Shimi. Uh, they were just wrapping up the, con the press conference about uh, 45 uh, minutes ago. And let me uh, tell you the numbers that John Cryan, the CEO, was actually here uh, explaining uh, to investors and also to the media was rather, uh, let's call it actually uh, depressive. Uh, the bank is uh, still not in the green. They're saying uh, that mostly the U.S. tax reform has been uh, quite a big problem for them without the U.S. tax reform. That's what John Cryan was reporting. Reporting they would have uh, made at least 900 million euros. Also, those numbers, that's what they have been saying, uh, would not have been satisfying for the bank. Mostly, uh, a big problem for them is also their investment uh, banking uh, sector. Uh, they're saying uh, that the volatility of the market right now is not well enough for them. So they were also in the minus there. There has been uh, quite some discussion. Let me also tell you that uh, the Deutsche Bank was, despite the fact that the investment banking sector was not doing well at all. Uh, a very high bonus to their investment uh, bankers, actually uh, in a, a total amount of 1 billion euros. Uh, many people here uh, in Germany, also from the political side, has been, have been criticizing that a lot. Also saying that investment bankers already make lots of money. I was actually doing some research and entry position here usually starts at a level of about 70,000 euro and then it can go easily up to to about 200, maybe even 300,000 euros. And um, what is Deutsche Bank's uh, plan for future growth supposed to uh, come from? Well, many have called Deutsche Bank already in the past uh, as one of the most dangerous banks in the world, simply because of hundreds of divisions and hundreds of different operations they are having worldwide. Uh, they are saying that they will be working on uh, this, that they want to reduce uh, this very difficult system of uh, divisions. Also, John Krein, and but he was actually already stating that last year during the press conference, that for 2018, they are very optimistic optimistic that the numbers will be again uh, good for the bank and that they will be then making again more uh, money. Uh, they are also hoping uh, that because of this negative result that they were having because of the U.S. tax reform that those problems at least in the future are not going to be existing anymore. But you can uh, really feel and uh, let me really describe that uh, feeling that I had that uh, John Krein is really a CEO uh, very much under pressure right now also from shareholders. We have to remember that during the last five years, shares of Deutsche Bank actually were dropping by more than 50 percent in the last year, by 8 percent. Also, the dividend that they were paying to shareholders for them uh, simply not enough. So, yeah, he's under pressure. He knows that. And many are asking if he is still the right one for this job. Right. Thank you very much, um, Daniel. We'll leave it at that. And uh Hope to see you next week. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. We'll take a quick break, and when we come back, we talk technology in the banking sector. Just stay with us. <laughs>